Hi everyone, Merry Christmas to all who celebrate. I'm actually wearing my Christmas sweater that I got at J. Crew like a couple years ago. I actually saw something like this on Stranger Things. Steve wore this. Steve actually, I he was probably my favorite character even though it's probably not a popular thing to say. Yeah, he wore a sweater like this at the end of season one and I really liked it and I thought it was sort of retro and cute. I'm actually sort of burning up in it right now because we are in Austin, Texas and it's like in the 60s so I just sort of wore this for the video. But today I wanted to just sort of join in on the bandwagon wagon that other skincare vlogs are doing and as we go into the, the new year I just wanted to give you sort of an overview of the top five sunscreens that I've been using in 2020. I've been using these religiously throughout all of 2020 and so I highly recommend them and I'll be using them well into 2021 and beyond unless, you know, they don't change the formula. These are sunscreens that I've already reviewed on my channel, so I will give you some cards up above that you can click if you wanna see more reviews and see sort of how it goes on. I have applications that I have on my channel. But before I get into it, I just wanna say thank you for clicking on my video. Thank you for watching. If you don't mind just hitting the like button down below, it really helps my channel grow and expand and I really appreciate it. And definitely hit that subscribe button as well. If you wanna see more skincare vlogs from me in the future, I definitely would love to have you here here to join this community, please definitely subscribe, stick around, hit that notification bell as well so you can be alerted for new and future videos. Okay, so the very first sunscreen that I have been loving in 2020 that I will definitely be using beyond this year is the Elta MD UV Physical Broad Spectrum SPF 41 Lightly Tinted Mineral Only Sunscreen. Now, all of these sunscreens that I'm gonna be mentioning in this video is a good mix of mineral only combination as well as strictly chemical sunscreens. So there's a, a pretty good variety for every this is a facial sunscreen. It's marketed as for extra sensitive and post-procedural skin. So if you had any sort of laser done or if you have acne or any sort of, you know, maybe rosacea or any, or any sort of skin condition that makes it sensitive, this is definitely a good sunscreen to use. It has iron oxides in it, which I really like because iron oxides can potentially protect from blue light. Blue light is just part of the visible light spectrum that we get from not only the sun, but also our devices, our overhead fluorescent light. This blue light can drive hyperpigment especially in darker skin types. So if you have a darker skin type, it really behooves you to try a tinted mineral sunscreen. It really helps to provide that blocking potential. There's some evidence to suggest that blue light to a certain extent can induce the, or contribute to the visible signs of aging, but really it is the UV, the UVA that drives the aging process. So the zinc oxide in here, the titanium dioxide is gonna create a physical barrier to protect your skin from the sun. One thing it also has in here is alpha lipoic acid. Alpha lipoic acid has been shown to combat or reverse in, in a sense the uh, photo aging. So the, the visible signs of aging induced from the sun and sun exposure. Having that in a sunscreen I think is really smart. And also in here is quercetin, which is a plant-derived polyphenol. And this has been shown to have anti-inflammatory components or anti-inflammatory properties. So in inflammation drives a lot of skin conditions. It drives the visible signs of aging as well. So having this in a, in a topical product like a sunscreen, again, theoretically can not only provide some anti-inflammatory properties to the skin, but can also potentially absorb or help to fight off the UV free radicals produced from UV radiation. So yeah, I really like this. This is a lot more hydrating than something like the Australian Gold Tinted Sunscreen, which I also reviewed on my channel. That one dries down really matte. I use that in 2020 off and on. I didn't really like it. I think I got that one for Christmas of 2019. It provides good protection, obviously. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a good SPF and, and everything, but it dries down pretty matte. This one is very hydrating. It stays hydrating throughout the day. And I don't, it doesn't have any oils in it as well. I don't notice any drying or, pe or pilling or anything like that. So I highly recommend this if you're looking for a good tinted sunscreen. If you're a guy, it doesn't really look like you're wearing makeup at all. It just sort of blurs imperfections. And it's, it's great to wear, especially if you're going outside for a long period of time. Definitely try this sunscreen in 2021. Okay, up next is a combination sunscreen that contains zinc oxide as well as octanoxate, which is a chemical filter that filters out UVB. And this is the Dermatology Tinted Moisturizer SPF 46 universal tint. It also is marketed as anti-aging because it has a, a lot of different extracts and, and compounds in it that can supposedly, theoretically, 
fight the aging process. Now, sunscreen in general is gonna be an anti-aging product because it is providing a barrier, absorbing UV radiation. This one in particular is going to have a good combination of zinc oxide and a chemical filter that will block UV as well as absorb UV. So it's going to be anti-aging just inherently by its ability to reduce the visible signs of aging from the sun. UV contributes to about 80 up to 90% of visible the visible signs of aging. So a sunscreen, again, is going to be anti-aging regardless of what else is in it. But this is a universal tint. A lot of people with different skin tones can use this quite well. I'm actually wearing this sunscreen right now on my face. So you can sort of see that it it's not completely dark. It sort of matches my skin tone like on my hands. It is oil free. It's broad spectrum. It's a good SPF. I think it's even higher than the Elta MD. Yeah, it's, this one's 46 versus 41. I've been using this off and on too. I sort of go in between these two quite frequently. I, I did that a lot throughout 2020. I really like this because it's extremely moisturizing, even more so than the Elta MD. So if you have dry skin, definitely try this one. It's again, extremely moisturizing and it stays that way for throughout the whole day. I, ideally, you want to definitely be reapplying throughout the day, but overall, I really like this because of the moisturizing component. And also this contains niacinamide. Niacinamide is a, it's a form of uh, B3, a B vitamin, a water soluble vitamin. Niacinamide basically, when applied topically, you can help brighten the skin, reduce redness and hyperpigmentation. It also may help reduce fine lines and wrinkles to a certain extent, as well as reduce oiliness of the skin. Niacinamide is a fairly benign ingredient. I mean, most people don't have any problems with niacinamide, especially in the dermatology. Some people do have reactions to niacinamide, and if that's you, definitely check out my video on niacinamide breakouts and what causes it. This also has knotweed extract. The dermatology sunscreen also has knotweed extract, which is the source of resveratrol. It's a powerful antioxidant. And some research suggests that it also has anti-inflammatory effects. So just like something like the alpha lipoic acid and the Elta MD, um, as well as the quercetin. Any, anything that's anti-inflammatory will theoretically help to combat inflammation in the skin. Inflammation drives a lot of skin conditions. It drives the visible signs of aging. Even UV radiation induces inflammation in the skin. So having this in a product can potentially help to combat that inflammation that just occurs even you know just normal living you have inflammation that just occurs in your skin in your body so just bringing down the excess inflammation is key okay also in the line of purely mineral only tinted sunscreens is the CeraVe hydrating broad spectrum SPF 30 sheer tint facial sunscreen. Now, in my review of this sunscreen, I told you that it was too orange for my skin type and I probably won't be repurchasing it frequently. I may do it in the summer whenever I want sort of a fake tan or fake glow on my skin, but also having that protection. I still recommend this to, some people can actually get away with the color. It matches their skin tone perfectly. It provides a, I guess like when you rub it into your skin, it, it for some skin types, it can really help to just camouflage any imperfections and redness. Some people actually really like it. I definitely recommend it for people to at least try it once to see if they like it and see if it matches their skin tone. The reason why I'm recommending it now in this 2020, lineup is that it is a really good sunscreen to have just if you're in a pinch, especially if you're gonna be outside for a prolonged amount of time because it has zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, anything that you can get that has just minerals only, it's gonna provide a good barrier to UV, to the sun. I highly recommend mineral only sunscreens, especially mineral only sunscreens that have a tint in them because it just helps to reduce that white cast that's associated with the zinc oxide. And it is extremely hydrating too. So if you have dry skin, this could be a really good sunscreen to have in your arsenal. But yeah, definitely try this out. I will definitely be buying this again, like I said, in the summer of 2021. I just haven't, I didn't use it a ton in 2020, but the reason why, again, I'm including it in here is because it is a really, really good sunscreen to protect yourself from UV. It also has ceramides in it, ceramide NP, ceramide ceramide EOP and ceramide AP. Ceramides are the main lipid classes in the matrix of the skin, alongside fatty acids and cholesterol. Ceramides are
are important for hydration and skin barrier function. And they may also potentially help to prevent transepidermal water loss. So basically the evaporation of water from the skin, helping to just retain moisture in the skin. But as time goes on, your skin's ability to produce ceramides declines. So having the ability to apply a topical agent that has ceramides in it to just sort of replenish your ceramide allotment in your skin, if you will, can be potentially helpful for just improving and maintaining proper moisture balance. Having a moisturized, fully functioning skin barrier can help to just protect it from the outside world, from any irritants that's in our environment, as well as potentially pollution as well. So again, topical application of ceramides may help to just sort of compensate for the lack or loss of ceramides that are in your skin. This also contains niacinamide. So just like the dermatology sunscreen, it has that B vitamin that can help to improve brightness of the skin, reduce redness and oiliness, as well as just aid in the potential anti-inflammatory effects of the sunscreen. Niacinamide has also been used in the treatment of acne and for helping to improve the absorption of UV. So again, having this in a sunscreen that you should be wearing every single day, regardless of whether you have acne or not, is I think highly important. There's sodium hyaluronate in it. So that's a, a basically a salt of uh, hyaluronic acid, which is a powerful humectant that helps to bind water to the skin and just improve the overall moisture content. Again, if you watch my video, my review of this, you can see that it's very, very moisturizing just from the visual alone. But yeah, if you if you wanna give this a try, I suggest doing it. it. It's highly protective and I highly recommend it for anyone who has, especially anyone who has a darker skin type than, than I do. Okay, up next is the Bano Baji Milk Thistle Repair Sunscreen SPF 50 PA4+. So this is a Korean sunscreen that I actually reviewed in my Yes Style haul. This is a purely chemical sunscreen, but these have filters in, in them that aren't approved here in the United States, but, but are actually, have, have been shown to be extremely robust, even more so than the filters that we have in the States for filtering out UVA as well as UVB. They're also a lot more stable than something like avabenzone, which is what we have in the States to filter out UVA radiation that really, that ages the skin as well as to a certain extent contribute to skin cancer. So it has Uvenol A+, Uvenol T, and Uvenol T150. And these are the the main sunscreen filters in here that help to that have really good protection against the the broad spectrum, the UVA and the UVB. And this also has niacinamide in it as well, so it's anti-inflammatory potentially, as well as helping to improve the brightness of the skin. And it also has a burdock root extract, which is a it's a good source of antioxidants as well as anti-inflammatory components. So again, antioxidants may help to reduce the free radical damage that is caused by UV radiation, as well as just everyday exposure to the element. There's some preliminary evidence to suggest that burdock root extract can be helpful for treating acne. If you have acne, definitely see your healthcare provider. You don't wanna be treating yourself, but be aware that there is some evidence to suggest that it may be good for acne. Talk to your doctor about that. And it also has milk thistle extract, which is on the label. Milk thistle extract has been shown to absorb UV radiation. So it may potentially help to improve the absorption of UV in addition to the filters that it has in it as well. The sunscreen doesn't leave a cast at all. So it's perfect for people of all skin types. I don't know if you can see that. It's perfect for people of all skin types. It blends in very well. And yeah, I like it. It's a really good moisturizing vehicle. Now I could only see two filters in it. So I'm not sure. I'm hoping that it has the SPF that it's on the, that's on the label. It's like the Centella extract controversy that I talked about previously. There were only two filters in there. Somebody found that it was only like an SPF of up to 19, which was concerning. I'm going to trust this company until I see evidence otherwise. I'm gonna trust this brand, but if you are going out in the sun and you're gonna be out there for a long time, it's best to probably use a mineral sunscreen or maybe even a sunscreen with more, more filters in them. Okay, finally is a Japanese sunscreen. This is the Can Make Mermaid Skin Gel UV SPF 50 PA4+. So this actually has more filters in them. This has Uvenol A+, Uvenol MC80, as well as Tenosorb S. These are really good broad spectrum chemical filters in, in Japan, in Asia, that can help to really filter out UVA. They're more stable in response to 
the, the elements in response to light and oxidation. It also has a, a little bit of titanium dioxide as well as zinc oxide. So these are minerals that really create a physical barrier. It's kind of down on the list, so I wouldn't rely on it completely as a mineral sunscreen. But again, you're gonna have five different filters in here and, and agents in here that are going to be protective from UV from the sun. There are various flower extracts and plant extracts in here, which may be a good source of antioxidants and anti-inflammatory components. So that could be potentially helpful for the skin. There is a ceramide in here as well, I believe. So you got that going for it. And it's also extremely moisturizing as well. There's no cast. You can see this in my Yes Style haul as well. And there's, it's also extremely moisturizing. There's no cast at all. You can see how it goes on my skin in my Yes Style haul that I published previously. Yeah, I really, I really like this Japanese sunscreen. I think it's probably even more robust in terms of the filtering agents than the Banobaji. I like both of them. I like how moisturizing they are, but definitely check both of these Asian sunscreens out. Okay, well, I think that rounds out the top five sunscreens that I've been using in 2020. Were there any sunscreens on this list that you've been using? How do you like them? Were there any sunscreens in 2020 that you've been using that you would recommend to me or to anyone who's watching this video? Let me know down below in the comment section. And again, please hit the like button. Let me know that you like this video. Stick around for future videos. Hit the subscribe button. I'd really love to have you here and I will see you in the next video. Bye.